It's time to start disassembling the mast. The sheave is still up there. I'm hoping to put this onto this pull and then lift it all the way up to the top to push the mast, to push the sheave up off the top and then lower it down without dropping it on my head. Thought I would also show you how easily these ropes move. The sheave up top is working really well. It's all on its own right there. Better than nothing, right? Here's some more bracing that I put on the boat for the bottom of the mast. And then here's the way that I'll reattach the bracing for the hull. Got the collar off. Here's the latest setup. This will support the weight that I'm going to put on it from a winch that will be attached to the bottom of the mast, which will lift the mast up just a little bit. When it gets lifted, I'm expecting that it will fall this way. It's already leaning and it's already putting its weight up against this pivot point. This winch is attached to those A-frames, the same way I had it when I put the mast in. So I'm expecting that it will catch the fall. And this A-frame will help to keep the mast from moving sideways. I think the slot is going to do pretty much all that work, but having a backup doesn't hurt. That went well. That was not the controlled release that I wanted. I wanted to be in control with this winch in regard to how the mast went down. But that didn't happen. And I think my mistake was that I did not have this tidying up. This next stage should be extremely simple. I'm just using this winch to inch this up. tension on here so that the A-frame stays upright under the tension here which is lifting the mast. This will prevent it from going off the side. It's on both rollers now. I was switching winches, so I was tightening up this one in order to take the pressure off this one. And while I was doing that, I moved it off of the rollers and it fell down the way it did there, which is actually perfect. There were three safety measures that worked all at the same time. These winches kept the mast from falling down further. This rope kept the mast from falling over up here. And this rope in the bow kept the mast from falling down that way. I'm just gonna put on some gloves, use the friction that this cleat will provide, and lower it down. Piece of cake. I'm 
Not even using much of a grip at all. It took six hours to get the mast down to the ground. Old motorcycle frame. Now there are cleats. One, two, three, and four. Some paint in the plastic bottles. Little rubber bits. Put down a thick layer of paint. Spread the rubber bits. Almost done. That took almost a full gallon of paint and almost three five-gallon buckets of rubber bits. I put a mixture of half paint and half paint thinner inside of here, pumped it up, and I'm just spraying it on. The idea is that it should be very thin so that it can soak in, and it shouldn't be sprayed on so that it's vaporized. I still want it to be a liquid. What I'm hoping for is that this will penetrate all the way down to where it's stuck to the paint that's underneath it. That's what it looks like after. Took two gallons of paint and now I'm going to let it sit for about a week so that it will become hard enough to sand. It's time to seal up the stern. This was an easy piece to fit. Got the stern primered. Here I've left it raw metal because I'm going to put coal tar epoxy there. I think the water line will be about here, but I might as well make it higher. Protect all the metal the best I can. The sides are already done with unit rig gray. It's just the first coat. These little boxes at the top are vents for the engine compartment. They'll have doors on them in the future.